Top Sport pagrindinis Kauno Žalgirio rėmėjas. Top Sport kazino kortų lošimai, stalo lošimai, kauliukų lošimai, lošimo automatai, lažybos. Nesaikingas lošimas gali sukelti priklausomybę. Įsivaizduokit, ate apie tų metas jūs pasidarėt kavos, turit laisvą minutėlę ir norėtumant pasižiūrėti buvo pirėkščių rungtynių statistiką ir pasiklausyti žalgiriečių komentarų. Bet turime problemėlę ir jums nieko neišeina padaryti, nes tinklo administratorius blokuoja jūsų prieigą. Su mūsų draugų NordVPN programėle tokių problemų niekada neturėsite. Prisijungite ir naršykite internete nevaržumai. Tad paskubėkit įsigyti NordVPN, nes dabar dviejų metų planui net 70 procentų nuolda ir dar pakalbėjau įdomi keturi mėnesiai su kodu ZALGRIS. Tai kveskit didžiosio praeitėje. Sveiki visi Žalgirio sirgaliai, dar vienas Pick and Bot Talks epizodas ir tikriausiai jūs dabar galvojote, kur dingo tas senas, geras mūsų parinktas setas, kurį buvome sukūrę specialiai mūsų laidoms. Neišsigaskit, viskas tvarkoja, jis dar grįžti, tiesiog esame viešbūtė, kur apsistoja pirėjo olimpijakos krepšininkai ir čia esame kartu su manimi, tauti vidu saboniu ir gana pažįstamų veido Lietuvoje, eik nuo brazdėkių, labas signai. How you guys doing? We're doing just great. Now we made this guy a podcaster. So how Love about it. that? Yeah, I mean, he suits the role perfectly. <laughs> I think that, you know, out of the clips that I've seen, he's made me laugh a few times, which is quite surprising, but he's doing a great job. I'll take that. I'll take that. Ok, kad geriau reikštume savo mintis, turėtume gilius pokalbius, mes šitą pokalbį įrašysime anglų kalbą, neišsigauskit, yra subtitrai, va, kur mano pirštas juda, ten galit paspausti ir įsijungsti lietuviškus subtitrus, o mes važiuojam toliau and we can roll. And I want to start this conversation with one, one thought that Tautvi the Sabonis mentioned in the earlier podcast that we did with Keenan Evans. I might throw him under the bus just a bit. He said about your celebrations that you might be flexing in front of the mirror your celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just before the games, you imagine those winning moments, those good shots, and you just flex it. You're just preparing, rehearsing. Is that true, Iggy? I mean, right before games, I don't do that. But <laughs> is there those moments of visualization where I'm in front of the mirror <laughs> listening to music and just, you know, practicing some things there have been those moments because you need to be ready to, <laughs> to celebrate the right way. Fair you enough, know, fair enough. Out, out, of, out of your head, Tutis, can you remember some of his celebrations? I mean, the threes, this, this one was his favorite. Yeah. Coach G every time, Big every, G, every time he scored, yeah. Coach G's already, I'm just <laughs> waiting for you to look at him and yeah. you got it, Coach G's like, yeah. That's, 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 that was my so, man right there. there Are we go. missing out some of the celebrations? Ah, no, that's about it. I mean, I like the, you know, like Tootie showed that low three point yeah. celebration yeah. where you kind of run across the yeah. court like that, the too little. One of my favorites, um, <laughs> you know, and then just you know, the classic flexing and screaming and whatnot. So only problem is the only biggest problem is when he was with us last year. I needed a dunk in your face proper. He got a couple solid ones, guys. Flybys, flybys, but never nice. the. Uh, and then you can flex. Close. There was Hopefully, a there's close no tomorrow ones. either. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, Kate's probably going to be ready for you. So. Extra motivation <laughs> for me. Now we're in the different camps, Shalgiris and Olympiakos, but both teams have something in common before this game. They both won cups in Lithuania and in Greece. How was the celebration party? Then we can uh, go on talk about uh, how did Jalgiris celebrate? So how was Olympiakos celebrating the title? Yeah, it was quite great. Um, didn't know what to expect. Obviously, first time being here. Um, Locker room, we celebrate on the court for quite a while. All right. We, we were out there for like 30 minutes to an hour, um, you know, just taking pictures, celebrating with the fans. Once we got into the locker room, took a couple of pictures, you know, screamed, shouted a few times. And then <laughs> afterwards, you know, it was a good time as well. We got busy a little Because bit. Because you guys played, uh, where was the cup? It was in Crete. Crete. Yeah. In, Crete. Oh, in Crete. So yeah. they, they had a good little, you know, bar scene where we were up on a stage kind of just having a good time, okay. listening to some music, dancing, you know. But it was cool because the whole organization was a Literally. part of it from coaching staff to, you know, other members as well. So it was just cool. It was kind of like a, you know, family environment. 
That's cool. What Iggy said, does his description matches what uh, Jagger's experienced this year in terms yeah, of celebration? I mean, our celebrations, everybody knows, are, <laughs> yeah, are, <laughs> are good, are good. So, you know, I'm not going to get into too much details, but it, it was good. It was good. Uh, you guys beat Pau in the final. That's always a must for every Olympiacos player and fan uh, when you're facing your strongest rivalry. Can you uh, compare it somehow to what you have experienced here in Lithuania when you uh, you had Ritas in the LKL finals, you didn't have Ritas in KMT, KMT final, but uh, you know about the rivalry here yeah, in Lithuania. The, the funny thing is like, you know, here, green versus red, and now it's you're red versus you're green. Yeah, the colors, yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> you're the colors. It is crazy. I gotta say, you do look better in green, but that's just my uh, opinion. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Definitely a strange feeling for sure, being the opposite kind of color. Um, but the rivalry here that Jalgaris and Ritas has is super impressive. Like playing away at their gym is extremely tough. I didn't expect it to be like that. I know you guys would talk about it, be ready to play there. Um, but I didn't expect the environment to be that hostile. But this rivalry here is a little bit different. Yeah, like I mean, there is some real hatred and yeah. some, um, you know, real feud in this in this rivalry. And it's a lot of fun to play in it. It's extremely competitive. And when you win those games, the fans kind of just go crazy with, you know, they have like flares, you know, waiting for us yeah. at the hotel before the games at the hotel. They're screaming, chanting. So um, it's definitely something I've never been a part of. Can I just throw one quick question? What's your favorite uh, teammate this year? Oh. You know, there's <laughs> <laughs> right as soon as my teammates walk right in front. Um, yeah, I hate all of them. I hate all of them. I'm not going. No, I'm kidding. Um, favorite team? I can't. I can't point out one. It's tough. no. It's okay. I, I just. I was. Just, I was about to hear about. We can yeah, go yeah, back yeah. to that. That's that's <laughs> You gotta use the the scenario. It just yeah, came yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I want you to have play. to adapt, adapt. Smart play. Yeah. yeah, but I like everybody. I think uh, you know Shaq did a great job of just kind of bringing me in and making okay, me feel cool. comfortable, especially because you know how the whole thing went down. Where once I knew I was going to Oli, right. I just jumped on their team bus, and I don't think a lot of them knew I was going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah playing with them so that was just a little bit awkward but you know Shaq kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable and everybody else was great on the team. Wait uh, when the news broke out about you possibly going to Olympiacos we were in Cyprus yeah and yep. Shaq wasn't playing at that time also he was injured yeah uh, dealing with an injury yeah so he had time to warm you up. Yeah the I guess so I guess so and he did a great job with that so um, it was definitely a interesting time for sure and i still remember those moments of leaving and whatnot and it was definitely emotional for sure yeah i, I wanted to ask <laughs> about it i wanted to ask you both about it uh, what was your thought process at that point when you realized there's a possibility of going there and when uh, the plans uh, about going there fulfilled uh, to the whole point so what was your thought process at that point yeah man that's that's a good question um there was a lot going through my head because I had such a great year with Jalgaris and I feel like I learned from the coaching staff so much and, uh, you know, both on and off the court, there were so many different things. Um, but, you know, when, um, you know, a team like that kind of comes into the picture and you just don't know if that opportunity will always be there. And, um, you know, I think it kind of made sense for both sides in a way. And, uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, you want to play on the biggest stage and the biggest platform. So yeah. um, it was a tough decision, but I'm happy with where I'm at. Dude, this is when you wiped off the tears of Iggy leaving. <laughs> what what did you think? What did you write to him? Maybe you tease him just a little bit that he's going to be a red right now, going from green to red. So yeah, The worst part is I, <clears throat> I lost my neighbor, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the, the worst part. But, but no, I mean, it, it was sad. Um, it's a business. He, he took he took the decision that he thought that's better for him. And you know, uh, he moved on. We moved on. You know, and yeah. you know you, you don't look back. But well, every time you know you never know what what this season would have been with him. You know, and yeah. and what his growth would have been here or what his growth is there. But you know, it's all good, and then you know, we're happy for him. You know. Hopefully tomorrow he doesn't play good, and you know, <laughs> but, you know I'm gonna be on the sideline. You know, trash talking a little, but but well, we'll see. But you know. Uh, some decisions come and some contracts and some offers are on the table that some teams you can't say no to. And I guess 
this was one of those for him and you know it is what it is it's really nice to hear that you like me as a neighbor because yeah. there was almost every day where you had something to complain about man there was noise there was basketball was like bouncing uh, i remember i was like garbage gar the garbage, the garbage. oh my garbage. god the garbage, garbage. Like, i couldn't throw up the garbage man why like he has his own bin. You have your out. own bin. Everybody in any world, you have a bin, and on a certain day of the week, you take the bin and you put it so the garbage man can take it. Yes. He wouldn't take That's it out. That's usual, yeah. He wouldn't take it out. I'm like, I didn't know which bin was mine. It wasn't labeled. I, look Whoa. at your phone. I sent them. <laughs> Let's get this record straight. Did you used to throw the bags in his bin? Yes, for sure. A hundred percent. A hundred. Because the issue was, I would leave too many bags in my in my place, and yeah. I wouldn't be able to fit all the garbages in my. You bin. were generating too many trash. Exactly. Yeah. Like, imagine if what he's saying. If anyone's smart here, think no, about it. it how is. much garbage he had to have in his house to fill his garbage, my garbage, and he still had garbage. It was all about because of the takeouts. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Casa that had a lot to do with and it. all this, like, such, shoes such, such. too. But yeah. I, I had a stack of shoes that just all right i remember boxes. we we made one joint podcast uh, back in the day and tutis was telling a story about him preparing food for iggy was it a one-time thing that you prepared i something? prepared for you i don't remember i think i did maybe some pasta i oh, know yeah. you did you yeah, did. did i had soup, soup when i was yes, sick when, sick, when, when i was sick, sick yes. that came yeah. so clutch yeah. but i think it was it was pow, 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 pow. pow. It was my wife it was my wife all right that was amazing. i remember soup. when jasmine made us dinner yes that Schnitzel. Was, yes very good yep. so it was extra care from this side and oh, you still chose amazing. Greece. ah man we know why i mean there's one element up in the sky that helps choose greece over lithuanian fortune yeah okay okay uh I forgot one question. Well, we skipped through the topics, but I saw one of the interviews that you made already coming to Greece. Uh, you talked about nicknames and you talked about having one nickname uh, that was given some, someone from the Jalgiris coaching staff. And I imagine it was this guy and the nickname was Red Rocket. Yeah. Did, no. This is true. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, this it didn't take you him long. To... Yeah, yeah, Red Rocket. The only thing is like, I wish there was more moments where he could dunk it like aggressively so you know you see that red rocket fly and bam with the left or the right or the two-handed the be... valencia one the valencia dunk and i do like the 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 playoffs against Ritas in transition well that, that was one nice. you that, was, that nice. was good yeah, yeah. the whole setup the, yeah. the angle of the camera yeah. was good it yeah. would be him in uh, tc that would tease me about yeah. that nickname because they knew it bothered me but then <laughs> i just embraced it eventually all right all right. Uh, since we're walking down the memory lane, uh, I want to come uh, to go back to the last year. You carried a lot of load on your legs and your shoulders because uh, in 2022, you joined the national team. Uh, yeah, you played World Cup qualifiers. You played uh, preparation games. Uh, you played in the Eurobasket. Then all the season with Jalgiris. Then you join the national team once again for the Eurobasket. We're talking about uh, the load that NBA players carry, and you know about it since mm -hmm. you played the NBA. Can you say that with the national team coming in the picture, uh, players here in Europe also carry maybe not the same load, but they are catching up to what NBA players experience on the other side of Atlantic? I personally believe that the load here is a lot tougher than it is in the NBA. All right. Um, just basing that off of the practices that we have, which are extremely competitive all the time. Games are extremely competitive, whether that's local league or Euro league. You cannot, you, the day is off. Yeah. Yeah. You got to always play hard. And it's like those 40 minutes that you play, it is shorter games, but you play extremely hard in it. And like you said, with uh, national team as well, it takes so much time away from the off season. So you get about, if you play on the national team, you probably get about a month off you know, a year, which is not a lot. And and like I said, the practices are intense. Games are intense, you know. Um, whereas in the NBA, they do a great job of recovery and, you know, not pushing you during practices and kind of having every... They, they're more focused on recovery because of their schedule. Yeah. But I think the load in Europe is tougher. I like how how he's very politically correct, it's not, you know, and Ed's like, we don't practice. We didn't ever practice. <laughs> the difference between Ed and, and yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we didn't yeah. practice. We just, we didn't practice. <laughs> Can you add something to this topic? Because uh, your brother plays in the NBA. You see from the first hand uh, when he experienced, you know, what's, it was all about the EuroLeague like, so. I mean, it's, it's different. There's a lot of back-to-backs also in the NBA, you know, so that's, that regardless is tough. And what Iggy said here is 40, there's 48 minutes. 
Uh, obviously, what I get from Domas is, you know, he's a star player, so the treatment for him is different from than other guys. But, but I do agree with Iggy that the competition, the, the intensity, the level, the concentration, the, the mental toughness that comes with playing in the EuroLeague uh, than in the NBA where there's a lot of games that, you know, guys maybe take off or whatever, yeah. they, whatever the case may be. You know, I'm not judging here at all, but I understand that a lot of coaches here – uh, expect a lot, and the preparation for each game is it's I th- at least I believe it's 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 a, a little more than than the NBA, but I can't say because I haven't been, so yeah. I don't want to you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, from what both of you just said, the bottom line is you cannot uh, take the games as day offs uh, during the season because every game matters here, like in mm-hmm. Euroleague, like maybe domestic league sometimes, yeah, maybe yeah, sometimes, sure. but still, if you lose. Uh, uh, some uh, some surprise advantage. game, yeah. You can lose something, yeah, and then it might play out in the, at the end of the season as a bad outcome, yeah. With a coach like Tudi, you can't even have a practice off. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, always watching, always guarding. Oh my goodness! No, I, I now that you brought it up, I still remember. I don't know. Keenan once said it. Uh, I don't know who was asking this year, and then when we were doing the '90s shooting, at yep. that time, I, we, everybody has to shoot threes. Well, now he's got to shoot his pull-up too. I'm like, Iggy, <laughs> oh, shoot yeah. threes. I don't want to shoot threes. I'm, I'm warming up. I'm like, Iggy, shoot threes. <laughs> that was and hilarious. there was a little back and forth there. That was hilarious. Yeah, um, yeah. good time. Uh, uh, I was cold, man. I just, <laughs> I just needed a couple of twos too. I was like, shoot threes. <laughs> During that uh, World Cup, uh, you had an injury yeah, versus Latvia, that very last game of the mm-hmm. tournament. Uh, how did that uh, follow you up uh, up to the start of the season? How did it mix your plans of good uh, going into the season? Um, I think that you know after the after the championship, I came back to Jalgiris because you know I didn't know yeah, yeah. about Olympiacos yet, and they did a great job of rehabbing that leg. And um, shout out to Justus and and the rest of the team for. Um, you know, I could go down the line, but they did a great job of just kind of, you know, recovering that knee. Um, and then once, you know, I kind of made that move to Oli, um, practices began and, you know, that load started to pick up, but the knee was doing fine. Um, and then it was actually my left knee after um, the first Milan game that, you know, I caused an injury on it and um, that kind of progressed and the pain stayed for a little bit. So, um, I would definitely say that the you know injury affected me for sure physically, but um, at this point now, I would say these last few weeks I've been healthy and feeling good. So um, you know you got to take care of your body. It's a it's a big thing. You've been starting a couple of games lately, like four in a row. Yeah, Tutti, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You've been preparing for other games. <laughs> <I hope> so. <laughs> so I hope I'm on the scout. Yeah, <laughs> can, can we say that? Oh, you don't want to see my scout. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Can we say that, uh, like, only right now you are fully and 100% ready to show your best uh, fulfillment and to play the, the bigger load of the minutes in this part of the season? I mean, I, you know, I always feel like and feel that way, but now I think physically I'm kind of catching up. Like no obstacles in the way. Yeah, yeah. I think I think now I'm starting to really get there, and I'm kind of, you know, taking a, a more serious approach to my body, and you know, taking it more seriously because I do feel little pains here and there. Uh, so now it's just important to get in early, but yeah, I feel like now physically and and I'm kind of in the green now, so I'm ready ready to go for sure. Uh, let's talk about another topic, uh, Coach Bert Sokos, uh, a new coach in your career uh, in Europe. You didn't have a lot of coaches. I'm not asking about uh, the comparisons between the coaches, but what it's like to play for a coach like Bert Sokos, the Euroleague uh, champion with Olympiacos back in the day with the man who made uh, the title game, but uh, sadly Olympiacos lost that to Madrid, but still a uh, coach that saw a lot of elite basketball in his career. Yeah, I mean, he's great. Um, the intensity that he brings to games is like no other. Um, you know, you got to be 100% ready to go at all times. And if not, he'll call you out on it and he'll notice. Um, but his mind for the game um, is definitely extremely high level and you can tell just the way that he reads the game sees the game and kind of sets up tactics you know towards certain games um, yeah he's uh, he's a great coach and I'm really happy to be learning from him and um, you know seeing how his mind works with the game and um, I think that's you know going to push me to become a, a much better player can we say 
that in terms of the game plan, he is stricter in terms of following the details during the game and in terms of uh, putting the player in the role? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he definitely, I mean, the entire coaching staff does a great job with the scouting report and just preparing us for games and, and seeing what different teams are bringing tactically. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is just, you know, the the mental side of it and just kind of preparing us to to go to war essentially in these big games. So, um, you know, they're right out there fighting with us. So we definitely feel that as a team. Is it hard to scout Olympiacos? You've been doing that for a couple of seasons right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, very, very... Uh, I, I really like watching Olympiacos. Uh, I think they play a very team-orientated basketball, which I can understand for you, it's a little harder because your game in general is a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, mm. mismatch situations, especially with injury. So, you know, I know that in his system, there's two dribbles pass, a lot of closeouts, uh, you know, so... Uh, Hard to scout, I wouldn't say, but the detail, like you mentioned, the, the style that he wants to implement, it's important for him. Every guy has to go through it, and it's not easy for some players, but once they do, they click. And you mentioned it before, the last year, uh, almost a perfect season. Yeah. One possession. <laughs> one possession well, shot. One shot away, yeah. So, Crazy. you know, it's, it's, when you think about it, so, you know, all the respect towards uh, coach and his staff, you know, and obviously they lost two big pieces this year. They got a different kind of roster, but they're playing great. Ba right now, they're playing great basketball. So, Appreciate that, too. Uh, yeah. The team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 17, I don't know. <laughs> one more question for you. How do you like how they adapted to play uh, without Wesenkov and Lucas, such a big pieces like you just mentioned? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, uh, a lot of the years was very similar because the team group was was the same in some ways, you know, and without those guys, he adapted, uh, added new things uh, to adapt to the, the strength of, he, of his players. But, but again, it takes time to get to adjust. And at this point where you want around March, start rolling, though, you know, even Iggy says his body's feeling good. So every coach, every team wants to get around March, start getting that good feeling. And uh, like I said, they're, 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 they're playing good basketball right now. Since it's learning experience so for you. you guys. Yeah. Thank you. See, I was <laughs> waiting for that. I was like, like one, two, like, yeah, where's our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're crazy, so man. You are playing at a high level. <laughs> Since it's, uh, it's, it's been a learning experience for you to play for a new coach, as I can imagine, uh, to play uh, for the new club, new organization. Was there a moment at the, at the beginning when you started that process, when you came back home after the practice or after the game, when you felt... I don't like basketball anymore. Basketball <laughs> is not not that fun anymore. Was was there a moment like this? To be honest, I you know I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Um, so But one one thing is to new, another one is to experience. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. That's true. I mean, there were definitely days where I'm like, here we go again. You know, I got I got to oh, start shit. over yeah. from the beginning. You know, uh, similar to how it was here last year for me, uh, just going through those ups and downs and you know those those downs are tough but you just try to stay level with it um one thing in athens and greece that is amazing is the weather yeah weather helps yeah you're beside the ocean you know there's a lot of cool things to see so um it kind of gives you a different perspective and you know there's more to life than just basketball but there's times where you know you're definitely just focused and and you just want the to be the best version of yourself, so. I mean, guys, like, coming from where you come to play and then going for a coach like this, you know, it's growing pains. You got to go yep. ups and downs, like you said, and you'll get there. It depends on how hard you work and how hard you listen. Listening, is, listening yeah. is the harder part for you. The working, you work. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, Shaq, Shaquille McKissick, uh, like in a way, uh, getting you under his wing, showing you around uh, surroundings and so on. And from what I saw uh, watching before the game, Olympiacos guys like Thomas Walkup making gestures, Yanulis Lerenzakis, another cool mm -hmm. dude from this team. Mm -hmm. It seems that you joined another uh, cool bunch of guys in your career. So how does the locker room look uh, from your perspective, Olympiacos perspective? Good yeah, question. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. There's definitely a lot of personalities on this team. Um, But, you know, me coming a little bit late into the season and these yeah. group of guys already being together for yeah. so long, I just kind of wanted to observe and just kind of, yeah. 
integrate myself into the team slowly but yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun being a with a bunch of guys with high energy, you know, you could talk your shit a little bit, you know, and, which is my favorite part. But uh, just do joking. you back the shit up though? No? Always, man. Come, <laughs> yeah. on. Come on, there's always substance. There's back. really easy that I can send a message to see if that happens. I, I'm, I don't know. There's a lot of good players on that team. Oh, right? for sure. For so sure. you probably hey, who's losing. the biggest trash talker on your team right now? Oh, that's a good question. Biggest trash talker. Yeah, yeah. Saying Cannon, probably. Top three, top three. Rangdos, top three. Yeah. I would say in game, it's got to be Isaiah. Because, you know, okay. his celebrations, like he's going to yeah. celebrate every I time he has a bucket. The one with Unix and Barca. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then he got the payback. I, yeah, everybody knows that one, um, you know. You got to. Who else? Is there any sleeper guys that kind of. What about the Greek guys? Oh, Larry and Zach, is, are we kidding? Me? He mm. talks a lot of shit. So he, <laughs> like, he, he's, he has he, a nickname, Cobra, yeah? Yeah, Cobra. And he's he's definitely one of the most confident players right. I've ever been All around, right. for All sure. Right. So he's he's that's definitely a, got that attitude. That's coming from him. you? That's, that's big. No, it, 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 it's true, and it's true, and I respect that about him. All right. Any other sleepers that we might... How many sleepers do you want? I want to know. I want to know Olympiacos Barry. No man. Um, <laughs> I would say. I think uh, Tom can get under people's skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's just but that Tom, type I'm not of talking, but Tom He won't talk, yeah, but he'll but he, give you a little yeah, elbow yeah. here no, and I, there. I, I It'll be physical. Well, he's with been you, elbowing so. against Valencia a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Did he? Did he? Oh, did he get a? Yeah, he uh, got something, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. At the at the beginning, of the beginning, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Oh, I do remember that actually. Yeah, he did that twice. Yeah, he was just showing his power. His all right. Power uh, since Dominant. we're <laughs> yeah. since we're running out of time, uh, we are kind of limited because it's uh, like uh, a game's eve, one uh, one evening before the game. So we have to say a big thank you for you, Iggy. Uh, we hope that you won't be playing good tomorrow when this podcast will be out it will be after the game so we will right. we will know if we were correct or not I don't know. time will tell brother time that's will all tell. i can say uh, e e e e e <laughs> <laughs> i don't want you to be looking at i'm gonna be staring you down i'm gonna be yeah, I can't you. Wait. I can't wait. So, thank you for joining us thank you man thank you guys really nice uh, being on this podcast again thank that was you. awesome